Okay, a few um, pieces to review we've already covered, um, but just to stress, emphasize the importance of some of these things because then we're going to go into some additional issues of presenting evidence in court. Um, how best and sometimes how not to uh, do your presentation of the evidence in court and some factors that you just have to consider regardless. So, um, uh, first of all, um, hearsay, once again. Uh, now, the, the reason... Uh, for the, the prohibition on, on hearsay, and this is not universal, this is particularly with regard to uh, common law um, because of the, the best evidence rule. The best evidence is actual testimony by the person who actually saw it, heard it, you know, witnessed. Um, Second hand is not the best evidence. And, and so, um, basically, hearsay is not allowable if the, the direct testimony is available. It's just, you know, it's not the best evidence. Um, you know, looked at that way, the, the rule about hearsay is, is pretty obvious. Uh, but, as I say, um, this has special implications for us in terms of digital forensics because we are dealing with uh, uh, very often um, uh, business uh, transactions and uh, the even you know business records are not evidence of the transaction they are evidence around the transaction uh, they, you know, kind of indicate that, yes, a transaction has taken place, but uh, not directly, not as good in, in terms of the courts as somebody saying, yes, I went into the store and I bought such and such. Um, so we, we have that problem, first off, but then we have the second problem of the uh, fragility and malleability of digital evidence anyways and so we have uh, that additional um, problem with with digital evidence and again we have to you know really provide the foundation of admissibility to support our contention that yes you know these ones and zeros do support my story that such and such happened um, so uh, Anyways, uh, hearsay. Uh, surveillance. Um, now, we've, we've talked about surveillance and, and some of the uh, problems with regard to surveillance, uh, privacy issues, and so on and so forth. And always remember, employee surveillance is subject to the same limitations. Just because this person is your employee doesn't remove their rights. Um, you, uh, you know, may, and, and again, you're going to have to prove this, uh, have an agreement with the employee that um, under certain circumstances, in certain areas, at certain times... Uh, they are waiving their right to privacy. But that is not universal. And, uh, you know, be cautious of employee surveillance in the same way that you were uh, cautious of, of privacy invasions of anybody else. So um, be careful there. And again, that applies to search and seizure. Just because... Uh, this person is your employee, does not give you the right to search their briefcase when they go out of the building every day 
or when they come in. So, um, you know, be, be aware of those limitations. Um, do not uh, think that just because they're an employee you can get away with things you wouldn't be able to get away with with somebody else. Um, so, uh, you know, be aware of those limitations. They're just, you know, they are areas to be emphasized. Um, we may think that, uh, our, our need is obvious, but we have to, we have to demonstrate the need. We have to get, uh, employees to agree to the need. Uh, again, uh, going back to hearsay and, and digital forensics, um, you know, the chain of evidence, the chain of custody is vitally important, the foundation of admissibility, and if uh, you know, never rely on records when um, direct testimony is available. Uh, now, uh, lawyers are, um, you know, obviously going to manage this for you when they uh, take the case for you, but um, this is going to be some of the reasons that some of the things that you think are important, the lawyers do not see as important. And, you know, they, they are the experts. Follow the expert advice. That's why you're paying them the big bucks.